Well, this isn't going to be easy, but here goes. After a presenter purge last year left one of the biggest shows on earth completely rudderless and drifting through an ocean made up of people wanting it to fail just so they can feel like they were right, the same group of people, I might add, got the show into this mess in the first place. I truly believe that an understanding could have been met if obsessed fans hadn't gone so far as to drive a fucking tank through the street to tell the BBC what to do. Not only did they turn the situation into a two-sided fight, but they also made every executive at the BBC decide that it's probably best to cut Clarkson loose now rather than deal with these aggressive outpourings every time he does some racism or some punching. Yes, most people watch Top Gear for the presenters, and this will slice the viewing figures, but that's why the whole thing was a difficult decision, and since I enjoyed it for the creative challenges and the childish pranks, I guess I was never really going to be too badly affected. After all, whenever political or cultural issues came up, I'd always turn a blind eye and think, someone else must be enjoying this bit, and broadly speaking, I quite like Mexicans and cold meat, so... When the first episode rolled around, I was not wrong. I never am, thanks for saying that, you people out there. Thousands flocked to their computers to make whingy statements about how their lives were ruined. The same people I might add would whinge on when the left DBBC ruined the presenter's fun last time. For whatever reason, they still wouldn't see this as a win-win situation, but I certainly won't tell them. I watched this series with an open mind, and you know what? It was mediocre to all right. I know I'm far too complimentary, but compared to other reviews, I'm basically blowing Chris Evans. I felt as though the large number of presenters made for a throw-enough-shit-against-the-wall approach, but it did kind of work for me. Some of the presenters seemed competent. But there is something to be said for the fact the old show achieved a larger personality with fewer people. The format is mostly the same. The bigger changes occur in the least impactful places, and although the series started shakily with awkward humour attempts, it grew more into itself as the series progressed. Yes, if you were willing to venture into this with an open mind, there were actually some good things. I'm sorry, viewer, that I haven't helped you successfully get off with angry comments. If you watched this show hoping it would fail, welcome to the bottom of the moral well with me. I'm going to stand here laughing at you from a slightly elevated position made from this open-minded review. But now, it is time for me to admit that you were right about some of the problems. Trying to create chemistry where there is none is the biggest fault. The last three presenters grew closer over a period of many years, and attempting to force it has led to cringeworthy banter, and one presenter stabbing the other one in the back, much like I hope the two words cringeworthy and banter. I do wish one of them would stab the other in the back. The ratio of attempted jokes to landed jokes was woeful, but let's all gain some perspective here, because I sense I've probably pissed some of you off by being correct. No, stop, it's time to be humble. This is a TV show that reviews cars. It's not supposed to be good, it's supposed to be niche. If you really like cars, watch Top Gear. It's informative and sometimes even exciting. If you don't like cars, it's not for you. Maybe do something more useful with your time, like finally finding out what the EU is.